Good morning, New Hope Manoa. Oh, that's loud. Good morning, New Hope Manoa, and good morning online. Those of you who are logging on right now. I'm just gonna sing a familiar chorus before we get started. It's talking about how good the Lord is. Oh, there's no one like him. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me. Facebook Ohana, everybody say good morning. Facebook good morning. Ohana. Good morning. Facebook I want to turn that camera, but if I do that, something's gonna unplug, and we don't. <laughs> well, good to see all the brothers, sisters here, and little Peanut. Where's Peanut? Oh, you just have to be here to see little Peanut. Yeah, little Peanut is 
A little puppy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so good. We're going to be talking about uh, the resurrection life of Christ, but the reality of death and life. And, and recently, because things are opening up uh, in Hawaii and and many people in light of uh, deaths and funerals, they kind of held off because uh, they wanted to gather. So they, they held off in, to, uh, to gathering. So I've been getting more calls uh, you know, from different mortuaries to par participate and be a minister, funerals. And when you think about the reality of how death affects uh, us who are yet alive, we, we sort of lose our loved ones. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a hard thing. But it, it can be uh, it can be a joyful celebration because obviously of Jesus, right? His resurrection life. So I got we got Bev here. I'm I'm gonna save my little sort of testimony or story about uh, Barry for the message. But just uh, oh, just a neat connection because I was I didn't realize you were gonna be here, and it's just yeah, kind of fits in with a real life um, just man who's who's alive with Jesus. So it's uh, Dev Masuda. So, but let's worship the Lord and let's uh, let's stand for this uh, first song. If you're at home, just I pray that uh, our hearts would be just the living sanctuary. You know, we just engage, experience the Lord through His Holy Spirit. So uh, yeah, just fix your hearts uh, with what's going on. And that's why it's, sometimes it's like easier to get we not hold each other accountable. It's just you know the gathering together kind of brings us to center on Jesus together, yeah, so, so good. Welcome, brother Dr. Wyland, as he leads us in worship. We love you, appreciate you. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Facebook Live. Good mo morning, Manoa. Good morning. As we sing this song, let's just reflect on how Jesus, how he died for us. And more importantly, how he rose again and how we can praise him, praise his glorious name for that. I cast my mind to Calvary. Jesus and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands feet, my Savior on that murderous tree. His body bound, and Oh, 
altar in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus. that there's no barrier, that there's no wall, there's no mountain that you won't pass in order to reach us, Lord. And how you walk with us through every valley, Lord, through every trial, in the good times and the bad, Lord, that you are there and that you are constant and your love is so overwhelming. God, we praise you this morning. i 
Lord God, help us to praise you, not just this morning, but every day, this week, every day of our lives, Lord. Help us to reflect who you are to the world, Lord. How you came, how you gave your sacrifice, how you rose again, Lord. Help us to live in light of that, Lord. Help us to live out the gospel. Live out your truth, Lord. Pray this in your name. Amen. All right. You guys can high five or hug one another if you guys are comfortable. You guys can have a seat. Thank you, brother. <laughs> oh, so good. Hey, brother Pastor Doug. Brother, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's good. Oh. But those, those of you at uh, at home, just viewing in or wherever you are, uh, it's such a. It's been such a. Uh, a, a different season, right? The last year and a half, the COVID and pandemic, and and then how it's affected life. And when I think specifically about the church and church gathering, and and that's uh, all changed as as well. And uh, but I I think that, well, obviously Jesus hasn't <laughs> changed, but He's wanting to use what's happened to change us. Uh, to transform us, and but when I think about service, and uh, again as a as a pastor shepherd, I, I've never intended on being like a technology pastor or an online pastor. I mean, it's, I just uh, and it, it's it's face to face, it's heart to heart. Whether it's with one or two or small groups, um, got to visit with the men, with, uh, my brother Pastor Mike, and, and a group of us that. Oh, such a rich, deep, meaningful, just, oh, so, it's so powerful, and uh, just a time in the Word and prayer, and then, then Grill Bill's Portuguese bean soup, I mean, that was, a, that was a plus, too, but just being in, you know, in person, right, just Brother Todd, and Ezekiel, and Tiago, uh, Lambert, hey, wow, it's like, yeah, wasn't it awesome? Uh, but yeah, and so I'm saying all that to say, uh, you know, it is what it is, right, in terms of those who are on, and, but, I mean, just know, I mean, we love you, it, there's nothing like the heart-to-heart, -heart, face to face but if just any need, I mean, uh, anyway, just contact myself, or just prayer on the phone, FaceTime, uh, you know, just to engage more personally, and uh, just, yeah, just let me know, but it, it's just good to be here, uh, heart to heart. All of that said, um, I know my brother Mike has, uh, his back's uh, hurting and all that, so I just don't want to like gather, just like do church, have a church service. Uh, I was saying that earlier. What was that? Oh, is that my phone? Oh. <laughs> was that? Uh, oh, okay. Is my time up already? Uh, so, um, yeah, just don't want to you know, it's like we have our order and all that, so you get it. But just, uh, Pastor Doug, I was just thinking about, just, he, just lay hands on our brother. Stretch your hands towards our brother and his back. Uh, Doug, would you just pray out? Uh, uh, just pray out. And again, I know those of you online, but if you're at, at home, just agree with one another. Let's believe the Lord for healing. Uh, the, Jesus, Jesus, uh, we just thank you. We thank you. Uh, we give you honor, Lord. You're the God of love, grace, and miracles. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Anyone, anyone just, just have a, a word, a word of encouragement or a need, even right, right here, just uh, to pray. And again, you know, sometimes you get into groups and... You know, it's like earlier I was saying, oh, we just, I don't know, stiffen up, quiet up, quiet up. It's like, okay, church is going to start. I 
know, I just feel like let's let's be family together and all that. So, but just any any word of encouragement, uh, brother Mike? Yeah, I just want to. You know, I was drinking this water and. Can you come up, or, or just, or at least right up here? Uh, we have a mic that'll pick you up. But just. Yeah. I was I was drinking this water. I was really thirsty, and as I was drinking and it was going down, my body was saying, "Ah, oh, I needed that." And I and I just thought about how this, as it's going down, is so such a great example of our spiritual man that when we come into the the fellowship of the believers, it's like our inner man is going, "Ah, oh, I needed that," and then. When you worship and the Holy Spirit is moving, it's like your inner man is going, oh, man, I, I needed that. Yeah. And so I just want to encourage everybody, when you're drinking your water, whenever you're drinking your water, that you remember that you have an inner man, the spiritual man, and the Holy Spirit is the river of living water that's flowing in us and through us. So Amen. drink of the Spirit this Amen. morning. Amen. Amen. That'll preach. It's good. <laughs> It'll preach. And uh, likened unto protein. So oh, just drink and yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's living water, and this is living with additives. <laughs> That's the word, brother. That's the word. That's the word, yeah. You don't want to know what I have. I have all kinds of stuff. Here. But just any, any other word of encouragement, those of you online, I mean, share with one another. If something dropped into your heart and need, I mean, you're right there. We can't hear you anyway, right? You just, but share with one another. Let's, let's engage with Him, experience Him. So if it's with your family, if it's just you, you and the Lord, what is the Lord saying to you? What is the Lord saying to you? And if you're with someone, just what is the Lord saying to you? Just about, about family, about and then is there something you want to encourage us now, the body of Christ? Uh, you can write, comment online. I know, again, I'm speaking to these guys. We're just interacting, right? Comment online. Encourage one another through the comments. Take advantage of that with the scripture if you have a word. So go ahead and, and do that. But uh, anyone here, just a word, a word of encouragement, a word um, where there's a need for prayer. So I just want to just have... Kind of family time, right? Yeah. Anybody? Don't make me call on you. <laughs> no. Oh. Just wait on the Lord. Just, yeah, any, any word. Ah, so good. So good. Wow, you guys really want to listen to me preach today. All right, let's move on, Rod. All right. Yeah, it's good. I believe the Holy Spirit's speaking. And if it's something, I mean, obey that. Obey that prompting. What he's speaking to you about yourself. What he's speaking to you about someone. And is there something he wants you to do? Right? That's interaction, like living interaction with the spirit that's what we want we don't want to just come to church okay you guys get it it's like this living interaction with uh our risen god you know yeah. what are you saying what are you doing how do you want to transform and how do you want to use me to to touch to reach out or even there's a need lord i need someone to reach out call a prayer request whatever it is so interact that's that's family that's family uh but just a couple of quick announcements um uh, thank you again cyrus can you put that on so uh, you see it those of you online if you can see this but the malama phone team so we're still looking for a few people for that uh, friendly voices caring hearts yeah, just to begin reaching out so we're still uh, developing the team there and and again all of that's for just for connection and community and checking in uh, on on our our flock. So and then the prayer uh, 
pizza, praise, whichever one that goes first. Which one? Pra oh, yeah, prayer, praise, and pizza. So we're going to do that once a month. So those are the dates. It's online at Facebook, too. And then Manoa Weekly, we put that up. And Day Church, we just started that back up. And uh, just we had first session. And oh, I just love... I just love digging into learning how to read and understand uh, the Bible. So I don't have it all together, so I, I'm going to be giving more principles and guide. But we are looking at the scripture, looking at how do we observe. We all have different lenses. So, uh, yeah, just a, a lot of great resource and material and preparing for that so if you want to get on the email for that to receive the notes but it's online leaving it online the the teaching so uh, just email me and we have that uh, email going out to our day church crew and then uh, oops this is a uh, this was loose on you last week huh i, I didn't i didn't uh, fix that up yeah maybe i should do what you did here all right that's what you did pastor mike like that oh smart john <laughs> Uh, and uh, Pastor John's going to be commissioned as a senior pastor. Pastor Wayne's coming into town, so I'm going, and a few of us are just, just gathering the ohana, just going to support and celebrate him and uh, Tilton ohana, so you can take note of that. Well, let's get your uh, notes out. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to post them. Facebook. Oh, my bad. Uh yeah, I don't see a lot of hits on that anyway. You guys I'm don't not. download it. No. <laughs> my bad, I, I did. I, oh, I was telling my wife, oh, man, I got to get uh, better prepared. There was UFC last night, so I, I kind of, yeah. Okay, don't get me confessing all of my sins. And, uh, so I said, oh, that distracted me from, and I apologize for that. But everything will be on here. Take notes. Take notes, all right? So we have our notes. Yeah, I'll post them later. I'll post them later. Yeah, with the answers. <laughs> oh, let's, let's pray again. I think I need to pray. Pray for me. Father, I thank you. I receive, uh, I receive your grace. I receive, and I want to yield to your spirit uh, as a teacher. But you are, you are the greatest teacher that's living within all of my brothers and sisters. Would you just interact with all of our hearts as the, the teacher of all teachers, the guide of all guides, the counselor of all counselors. And I pray that, Lord, you'd speak, convict, challenge, change us here and those that are, are tuning in. Lord, we, we just want to just be the church who just experience you and not just sort of have this church service. So, Lord, we thank you. We open our hearts to you. Lord, we turn from sort of our ways to your ways. Thank you. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Whew, we're, it's, we've been in 1 Corinthians for boy, a handful of months. Towards the first part of the year, we're 1 Corinthians 15 still. Pastor Keola spoke uh, out of 1 Corinthians 15, Pastor Mike. And then I'm going to speak out of a section of 1 Corinthians 15 this morning. Pastor Keola is actually coming back uh, next week, Father's Day weekend. Is it Father's Day weekend? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Father's Day weekend. But Pastor Keola is going to come back next week and then share out of 1 Corinthians 16. And so we'll be con concluding our 1 Corinthians uh, series. And so it's just been so good to observe uh, sort of chapter by chapter and, and uh, section by section. But we're in 1 Corinthians 15. I titled this... Uh, the reality of death and life. The reality of death and life. I was mentioning um, Bev. Sorry, me, me, I like to see, but I get that iPad right in the way. Oh, I can see. Oh, Bev, can you scoot over? Oh, no, no, I don't know. Okay, that's all right. But um, she just gave me, I'm, I'm going to be privileged to be a part of, of Barry's celebration of life service coming up uh, the end of June. And I don't know if you, you can see that, but uh, she just gave me an updated program. We've been talking, um, you know, just praying and, and all that. Uh, there's a, the reality of physical death uh, has, you know, been a part of, of uh, Bev and, and her family's uh, lives, just losing, right, losing Barry. But there's a gain because 
and I know, and Becky knows, those of you who, who knew Barry, you know Bev, that there's relationship with, with Jesus, that there was love for Jesus, and there was an assurance in his spirit, I'm ready to go be with Jesus. And yeah, just, I mean, still young and active, and uh, I can go on and on uh, about the life, and, but the reality of death, and we've all experienced that, I mean, in terms of maybe family or friends, uh, loved ones that have died. They've passed away. And I am honored uh, and ecstatic to, to share. This is a celebration of Barry's life. It's not uh, a celebration of his death. It's a celebration of his life. Yeah, the life he lived here, but a celebration that he is forever in the presence of the Lord. And those of us left on this side of, of the line of eternity, it's, it's all faith, right? It's faith. I mean, it, assurance uh, by the Spirit of God here, peace, uh, hope. That's a, again, I can't imagine, Bev, I, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I, I'm so Portuguese, I should just move this way. I have to see you. But it's, but it's, it's that, right, Bev? That, uh, and that's what I, I pray. And being human, I'm like, oh, I just want Bev to have like peace and hope. And, but, and I know it's very real because I've experienced that in hard situations. And being alongside of someone who's died, being alongside that young mother whose little child that first week, she just wanted to hold her baby knowing that that baby would die in her hands. Being in that hospital room with the mom and dad. That's hard. And sensing peace in my heart, but praying for peace for mommy's heart. Praying for peace in Bev's, uh, the family's heart. Right? The reality of that. Ah, oh, you get it. You get it. It's like real. 1 Corinthians 15 Verses 50 through 57. Would you uh, read along with me? And it's going to be up here too for those uh, tuning in. Ready? Go. I tell you this, brothers. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put all the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Whew. There's a couple of observations that I want to give you, and there's I me mean, as you look at that scripture and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I mean, maybe there's some things in there well, I don't quite understand. Like you know, we're still sort of grappling with the text. We're, we're still like, what what does this mean? What does this mean, Paul, as you were writing this to the disciples? What was he saying? And a couple of observations that I kind of took, took out of this text is, uh, and I see this uh, kind of bird's eye view. Paul is primarily, I believe he's primarily addressing 
the resurrection of Jesus. So that's in this chapter, right? 1 Corinthians 15. If you look at 1 Corinthians 15 in your Bibles, your Bible apps, you look at beyond, uh, you know, 57 prior to just all of 15, that Paul is primarily addressing the resurrection of Jesus. So there's that underlying in your notes, fill in the resurrection of Jesus. So we, we've learned over the course of months kind of the condition of, of the church in Corinth. Uh, there was competition. There, there was power struggles. Uh, there's uh, dealings with sexual immorality, adultery. There's dealings uh, with the, the brothers or you know, the family of God suing or in that culture, going to the law rather than working things out amongst themselves. Right, so there's various kinds of issues. There, there's issues, and, and Paul is addressing the, the question about death and faith in Christ. So, and, and then a big part of this faith, when you look back just a few chapters, I mean, it's like, well, you could have faith to move mountains, but if you don't have love, so there's a struggle with some. I think some Christians like they want this superpower faith, right? Because spiritual gifts, or the highlighting of who's better than, and, and, and all of that. You look at 1 Corinthians 13, and Paul's saying, love, love. And now he's reiterating, look, this is about the person that is alive, that he lived and died. That's the gospel, right? He lived, he died, and he is raised again to life. And your faith, because there's some that's, Discourage. You ever get discouraged when there's competition? You ever get discouraged when there's power struggle? You ever get discouraged? I mean, looking at the church and Christians, does all the Christians in your life encourage you? <laughs> when you look at the church and the divisions in the church and, you know, family of God. I mean, there's, there's struggles. That's life. And Paul is saying to us, hey, look, church. Let your faith focus on the resurrection of Jesus. And disciples, some are questioning faith and life after death. Have you ever questioned life after death? I mean, I still question life after death. Like, I mean, you know, what does that look like, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, the bodily resurrection. I don't, I don't. So I, I'm not here to, to teach on that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm still grappling with what the scriptures say. What does that look like? Because then you have to connect that with uh, second coming or rapture and or in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And then the dead in Christ. Wait, how does that? Wait, I thought, is the Old Testament, all the people who died before, the, I, I just personally don't have all the answers. I have some assumptions, some thoughts towards that. Does that make sense, Pastor Doug or Mike? Or I mean, others of you have maybe studied that. It's like we may have an idea of what, but I don't know that we, any of us have like, you know, the final sort of thought or, or word on, on that. So the bodily resurrection, what does that look like? So they're all questioning, but they're not just questioning maybe like we do and because uh, our faith is like, well, I, I trust fairly firm. I think Paul is addressing uh, those who are really kind of straying, right? Straying from, look, your faith's not futile. Because Jesus was raised from the dead. And then I see that there's contrasting imagery, and you see this in this text right here, of life and death. And, and he uses these words, right? You see these words. It kind of popped to me. The earthly and heavenly. Okay. The perishable and imperishable. The natural and the spiritual. The man of dust. Who is, who is the man of dust? Uh, so we're the man. Yeah, and Adam's the man of dust. And we are uh, men, women of dust. And the man of heaven who is Jesus, right? So you see these contra contrasting sort of images here. And how many of you, like, you, you s sort of struggle between being human 
and being spiritual and saved. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and he's addressing this idea, or well, I mean the issue of sin, right? Sin that lives among us, within us. But yet, I, I think, again, Paul is like saying, look, Jesus has overcome. And you look at, again, I'm just going the context of what we've, uh, what we've been rewarded with because of the resurrection of Jesus is, is this peace and life and victory over sin and forgiveness, like walking in that, that spiritual man. I don't know, we, we said it, uh, hmm, I was talking this week, maybe it was at day church, already, not yet. Already, we are raised with him. We're seated with him. We are in Christ. We are made complete. But then, not yet. The process. I mean, you, you get it? You following me? So the natural and the spiritual, the earthly and the heavenly, right? And, and so you see that. And then Paul introduces, here is the final bullet here. Uh, thank you so much. Beautiful. Man, Cyrus. Paul introduces a second coming theme right here. Right in those verses, uh, of victory over death. What does it say? Is it in fifty-one? Behold, I tell you a mystery. It, it's a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And sleep is a reference to to death, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed he goes on that perishable imperishable uh, I went to uh, mid pack uh, to pick up a keyboard and then I say oh can I look at the closet and there's hospitality and there's some uh, you know some perishable items sugar boxes creamers oh I saw sriracha sauce some Tabasco I mean, show you packets all that kind uh, and, and there's some, par and then, so I, I thought I'm just gonna bring, a, a, well, not as much stuff. I, j I just brought a handful of stuff. This is where I got the, you know, I went on stage. So I was just getting stuff because I hadn't been there for a while, right? But there's things that are perishable, and I had to look. Oh, oh, the sugar packet, two boxes sugar packets. Oh, that's plenty sweet. But ah, uh, jam up the date expired ah should have saved them though huh? still, uh, good. still good yeah. see that's that's you guys still good still good when the bugger expire yeah. well we have maybe different thoughts on that i think there there's a god knows god knows i believe god knows our expiration date Again, I don't know how it all works, the sovereignty of God and, and his hand and how I tell people all the time, you've heard, it, heard me say, I, I'm not afraid of dying, I'm just, I am afraid of how I'm going to die. So I was thinking about Barry and then a couple others just two days ago, I was driving 10th Ave and I couldn't cross over uh, Pahoa and under the bridge because they were blocking the police wasn't there yet but there's a car and there was a bicyclist in the middle of the road and just and not moving and someone was tending someone was on the phone so it, it must have just happened right and i don't i don't know the outcome i didn't you know stay to watch and so on i mean you know my prayers wasn't an expiration i, I don't know how it all were accidents happen you know it's just life life death the reality sickness cancer you know it's like we're faced with it but i believe god knows our expiration date and the hope that we have though is jesus right it is us looking towards heaven and beyond this life we've got to because again for it's all relative to all of, i mean Life is tough. Life can be tough. And if, I mean, again, Becky and I are just, we feel so blessed. Health, 
family, different things. We've got our challenges. I am her big, big challenge, and you know, on and on and on. But again, there's some, yeah, right, difficult situations. I mean, Kundos, just living through caring for dad, and then just different things that come up. I mean, for all of all of us in different ways. Pastor Mike was just sharing about his friend who was, uh, you know, with the bicyclist uh, uh, motorcycle accident. And that, that person died uh, on the spot. But again, it's like, wow, it just it happens. I want to give us just a couple of applications here in your notes. That uh, This has helped me as I reviewed this. This has really helped me. And I pulled some of these supporting passages looking into 2 Corinthians, the, the next book that, that Paul Right in the next letter that Paul writes, so I'm pulling some passages and themes from there. But number one in your notes, so this is my application out of this particular text. Is I felt like you know, Lord saying, Rod, yeah, you don't know it all about uh, second coming or rapture and how it's going to look, etc. And remember, oh, let me take a step back. Sorry, we focus. I, this is just me, and because I'm involved in pastoring and this and. And, and from a pastoral level and teachers and scholars trying to study, understand, you know, this rapture, sem- second coming, there's so much prophecy. And I, I, I personally, I, 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 I'm not sure, I'm not well studied in, in that area. But I do want to say in this, because that verse, those couple of verses, although Paul references a second coming theme, uh, Let's not take away from the prime, what I believe is a primary focus. It's a resurrection of Jesus. It's a resurrection. We're so concerned. So I'm talking now to, to us. and We're so concerned, the rapture and the second coming and this and that. It's, I want to be aware and studied. I want to learn and grow more. But Rod, identify like now. So thinking of that, I feel like... Rod, identify what's, sub- what's subtracting or distracting you now from growing in your faith, in trusting the resurrection of Jesus. What, what, what's subtracting from you? And I'm like, I didn't write it all down, but is there anything that you identify that's subtracting from or distracting you from just growing in your, in your faith, in trusting his resurrection life? And I just wrote, I don't think it's in your notes, I just wrote down my notes uh, that I want to understand the afterlife, but I really need to focus on my present life. I, I want to understand and grow in, in the rapture and second coming and, and the eschatology themes. And I, I, I want to understand, I want to grow. But I feel like uh, God's saying, Rod, focus on your present life. So what's, what's subtracting, what's distracting you today, Rod? There's some things. Yeah. There's some people. <laughs> any, any people in your life distracting? Second Corinthians 7, 1 says, Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Holiness to completion. Like, walking out, living this holy life. It's just an encouragement from Paul in his next letter. Like, so we have these promises, and, and he's, he's saying to them, look, I've covenanted with you. Uh, it's a father relationship. And, and he was saying, look, come out from among them. Be separate. And then he's saying, you have these promises. Let us cleanse ourselves. Lord, help me to keep cleansing myself by the love of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. As I focus on this life you get, this day you've given me. But identify what's subtracting or distracting. Number two, I feel like the Lord said to Rod, <laughs> Rod, involve, just keep involving yourself with good company. Oh, Chiago, so good company yesterday. It's good company. It's good fellowship. I mean, this is good company, good fellowship, right? And, and whether it's a Sunday gathering or a Bible study, I think, I think what we need to address, too, is just daily life, right? 
involving ourselves with good company. Good social media company. I mean, we got to go there. Like, the company I keep, it's on my iPad. It's on my phone. It's on Facebook or Instagram or this or the website. And then it's, it is, it's, it's company. Uh, it, it's company of what we're hearing or allowing our minds to, you know, to, to, to focus on or to be meditating on. What kind of company are we keeping <laughs> in our hearts, in our minds? And then let alone, I mean, there is a practical sort of company of like us friends, uh, associates, family, the influence. It, it doesn't say don't, don't get rid of like, don't not be friend. So you, right? It's like we want to be a light. It's not like, Oh, I'm so holy. I'm going to live in my bubble, my holy bubble. Oh, churches go. Oh, Christians. Yeah, let's. No, it, we're light and salt. But we have to watch. Rod, watch. Watch what you're involving yourself. And in. for me, my challenge has been social media. But, and I'll, I'll stop there. I mean, I, again, I can get specific. It's, it, it's been social. It, what my eyes have been engaging in, what I allow my mind. I mean, <laughs> if I were, if I were to be real, like, yeah, I should have watched less UFC, and done a little more preparation. I, I just, I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna make excuses. Little more preparation. I, I'm serious. It's like, that's that's. I'm just being real. It's like, ah, I I cannot short. I don't want to short chain. God, you called me to this, and so, I still want to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. There's one forgiveness. Anyone else? I know. Forgiveness here. Yes, the blood of Jesus. And I was. I was, I was uh, repenting. I was asking for forgiveness. I was asking. No, oh, again, I, I don't get caught up in my woes. But again, I, I know. I know what's subtracting and distracting. And I know that I need to involve myself uh, with less company of UFC on Saturday nights before Sunday morning. Verse 33 in 1 Corinthians says, Don't be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. Again, I'm not saying UFC is bad. Some of you think it's bad and evil. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. It, it, these cooking shows can be <laughs> immoral to you. It's feeding all of you. It's like, well, I become gluttonies, gluttonous. All right. So we look at, let's look at 2 Corinthians 2, 14 uh, through 16. Would you read this with me? Ready, go. But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of his knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Yeah. By the way, that thought, uh, the thought I have in that last section is like, I mean, to some, I mean, you don't, we're just not a good fragrance, right, as, as Christians, to some. I mean, they're just so opposed or whatever it might be. So, uh, but, but we are life. A fragrance, his aroma. And so I want to involve myself with good company. Number three as we close here. Number three. Ah, oh, this is so so good for me. Rod, invest in your um, lifestyle with Jesus in mind. So again, it's a I mean if I were to be like detailed, like Daily throughout the day, making decisions, uh, you know, life decision. Invest in like your lifestyle with Jesus in mind. Not just eternity in mind, because we've heard that, right? Like, okay, live in such a way where we're sort of building our mansion in, in heaven. Okay, laying up rewards. Well, how about Rod? How about... Wyland, Dad, I mean, you know, is the Lord speaking to you? Invest in your lifestyle now with Jesus in mind. And let me read 2 Corinthians 1.12 here. For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience, 
that we behaved in the world with simplicity and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and supremely, what? So toward you. It's like the present, the now. And like, I want to behave in such a way right now today. <laughs> Thank God for his renewing, renewing, restoring love and grace. But Rod, invest in just your lifestyle today with, with Jesus in mind. Lord, help me to adjust anything, thoughts, hearts, uh, relationship. Help me to adjust with Jesus in mind. And when I look at uh, the prayer, I'm going to close with this. And you can keep your eyes open and your, your spirits praying. Uh, as you look at this scripture, uh, I know I'm talking about the reality of life, of death and life. And amidst this reality of the natural and spiritual, the earthly and the heavenly and the perishable and imperishable, and we're living, right? We're living. It's like complete in Christ. We're spiritual. Like we've got resurrection power. Yes. We're Christians. Yeah. And we're planted in walking in you know, just this world, in this system. I just felt led to, again, I was going through 2 Corinthians, and I was like, wow, there's spiritual warfare in, in the midst of our life. And in our journey to death, oh, sorry, I just, this just came to me. In my journey, I'm going to personalize, my journey towards death, physically, I want to, Lord, help me to kind of live this out. I'm going to review this. Yeah. I'm going to review this. I need to review this. But in my journey uh, to live this out, I'm just going to pray this, and you pray and agree and sort of let your spirit pray, however, just in the spirit of your mind and those on Facebook as we close now. Father, we thank you. We receive... Uh, your word. We receive your spirit uh, that, that just forms us, that encourages us. Lord, we want the resurrection life of Jesus to, to affect us, uh, to influence us. And, and we just know because of, like, we, we can't earn it. It's like what Island was leading through that song. We, we don't deserve your love and grace. We, don't, we can't earn it. We can't work. We can't like work towards being more holy yet by your grace it's like lord you call us to be obedient so show us how to rest in you and then how to work out our salvation with fear and trembling with this sort of holiness in mind um but we know in the midst of this that we we walk sort of in this world but we're not waging the, the kind of war that the world wages. We, we don't want to like talk back. We, we don't want to enter into arguments. We don't, we don't want to uh, like wage war and, and argue. Well, I mean, just whether it's words and relationships or spiritual battles, Lord, we don't just, we don't want to wage it according to the flesh. Lord, you said the weapons of our warfare uh, are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. And so, Lord, I just, I know I'm just going with what I sense you've led me, Lord, even in this study. We place ourselves under the protection of God. And I pray that any one of us, and on Facebook Live, any one of us have, that have moved out of sort of the, that umbrella the, the refuge of the Lord. We're dabbling in uh, our eyes, our minds, our thoughts, our spirits, our, our lifestyle. If it's engaging in something that's so of the world, we, we just, Lord, Lord, help. Help my brothers and sisters. I, I just feel like this is something for, whether it's someone here or online, that there are strongholds because of this war in the flesh. There's strongholds. And we, and I believe, and you believe too, and maybe you've been crying out to be released or freed, and, and yes, you are forgiven. We are forgiven. But there's a working out of our salvation 
uh, just with this fear and train. You want to be more like Jesus in this area, in that area that you're, you're struggling with. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that the strongholds be identified. Lord, they're distracting, they're subtracting from our faith and growth. And we say the Lord rebuke every spirit of darkness, Satan, and demonic activity in the name of Jesus. I partner with my brothers or sisters, hearts and spirits to confess that we are in need of you. And we just ask these sort of chains, uh, the, the bars, what we've imprisoned ourselves because we've engaged, we confess we need you. Lord, break the stronghold in the name of Jesus. Break the strongholds, whatever they may be, whatever they may be, the greed, the lust, the whatever they may be. So we thank you and we give you honor. We give you honor. We love you, God. In Christ alone, I place my trust. And find the glory and the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me. My source of strength, my source of hope, is Christ alone. Sing that again. In Christ alone. I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. My source of strength, my source of hope, is Christ alone. It's in you, Jesus. We love you. Your name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 I love you all. Facebook, Ohana. Just keep in touch. Need anything, prayer, etc. Just be in touch. Love you guys. Have a beautiful Sunday. And we will too. And hey, don't forget, talk story, share something that stuck out to you, what the Lord spoke to you. We're going to have a little more family time. So love you guys. Woo! Thank you, Jesus.